Welcome back to Andy Cooks, the show where me, Andy, professional chef of 20 years, brings you along on my home cooking journey. And today we're talking about one of my all-time favorite dishes, fish and chips. So, fish and chips is an absolute favorite of mine, a complete classic, and it was always a real treat for us growing up. Every now and then, mum would let us get fish and chips for dinner. That was a good day. And then I lived in England for a long time, and my love for fish and chips just grew. And I think the fish and chips in England to the fish and chips we get down here in Australia and New Zealand are, are very similar, but slightly different. There's a few techniques that are a little bit different, but effectively, they're the same. But it's something that I don't cook very often. It's kind of one of those things that's, there's some great fish and chip shops not far from where I live. And it's one of those things that you get when you're out. You can enjoy it by the beach rather than spending hours at home making it. But it is worthwhile taking the time to do it every now and then. Uh, and there's some fantastic techniques that you learn along the way. So, fish and chips. This is what you're going to need. So starting with the fish and what you are looking for here is a white flesh fish. So you want a white flesh fish with big flakes. So I've got some snapper here. Cod is traditionally used in England, which works really well. But you can also use hokey. Barramundi, not my favorite, but you can use it. You could use harpooka or blue eye. There's lots of fish that's, that's suitable for this application, but you really want a white flesh fish with big flakes. So snap is a great option if you can get some. Uh, next, the potatoes. So what you're looking for with the potatoes is a floury potato. You don't want a waxy potato. So I've got some Dutch creams here, but you could also use King Edwards, Morris Pipers, Desirees, anything like that, anything that's kind of floury, which will give you that nice crunchy outside, but delicious, fluffy, soft insides. So to batter the fish, we're gonna do a bare batter. So I like to use two types of flour, tapioca starch and white flour, plain flour or AP flour if you live in the US, an egg. And what the egg does is just helps the batter rise slightly and become fluffier, and some beer. Now you want a lager, uh, a light beer, just so it's not too overpowering or too malty. And then we're gonna make some tartar sauce. By all means, if you wanna make your own mayonnaise, go for it. But I prefer to use some shop-bought best mayonnaise or whatever your favorite brand of mayonnaise is. And then we're just gonna dice up a shallot, some capers, some pickles, some lemon zest, and some parsley to go through it. So like I was saying before, there's some really great techniques to learn in this dish, from the triple cooked chips to how to tempura something or how to batter something, and temperature control of your fryer that are worth taking the time to learn how to do it. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna start with the batter, because you want your batter to rest as long as possible, and then we'll attack with chips. But before we do, please go smash that like button. It helps me out immensely. It gets that algorithm ticking. Now let's get onto that butter. So, beer butter. Just make sure our scales are zeroed. Start with your plain flour. So when I say plain flour, AP flour, it just means it's not like a self-raising. It's got a hole in the box, great. So we're gonna go, oh, bonus round. Someone left the spoon in last time, how good. So flour, preferably without a spoon in it. We want 200 grams. And looks like that box is empty. I'm sure I've got some more. Double O flour, but it'll do. So 200 grams. <laughs> of plain flour. 100 grams of tapioca flour. Now you can also use a potato starch or rice flour, and this flour just helps the batter be nice and light and gives it a nice crisp texture. And this amount of batter should easily do, you know, fish for four, no problem at all. No spoon in that one. All right, get rid of the scales and a whisk. Whisk those ingredients together little pinch of sea salt, maybe a teaspoon worth. Make a well in the center, crack your egg. Now for your beer. It's a lively one. Beer in the center. And you're just gonna whisk this. So when you're making a well in the center, what you're trying to do is incorporate the flour slowly. So you start from the center and work your way out. And when you feel like the batter is getting too thick, Add some more beer. It'll thin out again, and then you can start working your way back out the center. And this just stops you from getting crazy lumps that you're gonna to have to spend a lot of time kind of whisking out effectively. So I'm gonna use probably that whole beer in the end. Now, if you've got kids or you don't drink alcohol for whatever reason, just use um, cold sparkling water or soda water instead of beer. So I use pretty much that whole beer. And you want a batter that's, you know, runs off still. You don't want it super thick, but you don't want it super thin. So that was 
What's that, a 355ml beer, so I reckon that was about 310 mils. All right, so that's gonna go in the fridge to rest. So potatoes, I prefer to leave my skins on with my potatoes when I'm cooking chips. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with the skins, and if anything, it adds like another kind of element. They look a bit better when you plate in them. So we're just gonna wash these really well under cold water. Now we've got our clean potatoes. Get a bowl of cold water ready. I'm gonna cut the potatoes and we're gonna put them in the water to soak. Now, you can be as precise or as rustic as you want, but I like to try and minimize as little off cuts as possible. Because while you say to yourself, oh, I'll use those at some point, you never do. You end up throwing them out, which is no good. So in a restaurant, you know, we'd square these up make them all perfect. But at home, that is perfectly acceptable to me. But you want them roughly sort of two and a half centimeters square. Uh, and they kind of roughly need to be all the same size. It's another good reason of why I like these Dutch creams, is that their natural shape is quite long and a little bit thinner, so they're not rounded, that they're quite easy to get. You know, you can get four really nice chips out of each potato pretty easily without too much sort of waste. So in sort of fancier restaurants I've worked in, in the past, you know, we'd square these up completely and then you'd cut four perfectly even chips and every single chip would be the same size. Now, what you end up with is a lot of this. So you had a lot of the scrap. You can use this in a restaurant and staff meal, for example. I can't really use this here, or I could if I wanted to, but the reality is I probably won't. I'll probably put it in the fridge and then in a week's time it'll be off and I'll throw it out. So I try to minimize that as much as possible when I'm at home. The other thing to remember is that uh, if you just want to batter fish and fry it and buy some chips to fry that are already kind of pre-done, there's some pretty good chips on the market that are kind of good to go. There's not many restaurants left anymore that are making hand-cut chips. And I was at a very uh, respectable restaurant in Melbourne not long ago from a very popular and, uh, you know, I guess good restaurateur who shall remain anonymous. But I was really surprised that this place was expensive, right? It was a really expensive restaurant. I was really surprised to see that they were using brought in frozen chips. So don't feel guilty. If you can't be bothered to go through all this effort of making your own chips, but you do want to fry fish, go for it. There we go, chips done. Now we're just going to take this to the sink, drain it off, fill it up with water again, and drain it off just to get some of the excess starch off it. So there's our potato rinsed and drained a couple of times. So the first step of cooking is we're going to start them in cold water and bring them to the boil. In a pot, cover with cold water, get some salt in there, so two teaspoons, lid on and on a heat. All right, so while the potatoes are cooking, let's make our tartar sauce. So, like I was saying, mayonnaise. Make it if you want, or just use the shop bought stuff. Depending on how many people you're feeding is depending on how much you're gonna make. So if you think roughly, most people are gonna eat a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half of tartar, get that amount in the bowl. And then likewise, depending on how much mayonnaise you're putting in there is how much of the other stuff you're putting in there. So I've effectively done about five tablespoons of tartar sauce there. And to that, I'm gonna add one shallot, two pickles diced up, and about two teaspoons like this of capers with the knife run through them as well. And then to that, we're just gonna chiffonade some parsley. Not heaps, just a, maybe half a dozen leaves, nice and fine. And put some lemon zest in there. Give that a mix. And pop that in the fridge for when we're ready. All right, so on here, we've got a wire rack over a tray. And we're just gonna lay our potatoes out on it. The reason we put it on a wire rack is so that you can get some air around them. Don't be a hero like me and just use some tongs. These are pretty hot. So from here, we're gonna put these in the freezer. Now you can just do it in the fridge. 
Uh, I prefer to do it in the freezer because it speeds up the process and also freezers are really low humidity. So these will dry out a lot faster. All right, so here are our chips out of the freezer uh, and they're completely cold. They're not frozen, they're not even close to frozen, they're just cold. And they're nice and dry on the outside. So now we're gonna cook them for the second time and three times in total. So behind me, I've got a pot of canola oil. So you can use canola, peanut, rice bran, grapeseed oil, any neutral flavored oil that has a high smoke point. So canola works really well. So we're gonna take that up to 130 degrees Celsius and we're gonna cook them for about eight to 10 minutes just till they get a nice crust on the outside, back on this tray and back in the freezer. So let's go. So we've got our oil set to 130 degrees, well not set, at 130 degrees, and we start to fry. So just drop them in gently, they're not gonna go crazy because the oil's not up super hot. Um, and for this many fries, I reckon we have to do two batches. So just watch your temperature. Temperature control is really important here. It's not like a fryer that, that has a thermostat, so we've got to watch that ourselves. The temperature is naturally gonna drop a bit because you're putting something cold in there. And then once it comes back up to temperature, we're good. So I can see now we're actually still creeping a bit over. So I'm just gonna be ready here to turn it down if we need to. Don't try and move them too much or they might break apart. The other thing that's really nice to cook for some chips in is beef tallow. Uh, I've done that quite a bit in the past and actually in my test kitchen with Kilcoy, I have my deep fat fryer is full of Wagyu tallow. It's pretty delicious. So if you can get some tallow, you use that instead. It's incredible. All right, so about four minutes in, maybe five, and you can see they're just starting to skin up, I guess you could call it, and change color. We're not looking for deep color here. We're just looking to set the skin uh, and get the actual inside of the potato a bit more cooked. So we're just over 10 minutes in, good to go. So I'm gonna pull these out, get them back on the wire tray, and finish the uh, second half. And then we'll pop the whole lot in the freezer again just to chill them down. And we'll cook our fish and we'll finish our chips. Excuse all the black stuff in my oil. It's because I cooked some falafel in this oil yesterday. And I probably should have cleaned it again, but I didn't. So now we've got our chips out. We're gonna leave the heat on high. We're gonna shove these in the freezer again, just to chill out. Uh, and we want this to reach like 180 degrees C before we fry our fish. It's time to cook our fish. So, we have our fish here. We're gonna season the outside with a little sea salt. And it's important that the fish is nice and dry. So season both sides. And then you can see here, this piece is a lot thicker than this piece. So we'll put this one in first. From here, we've got some more flour. In the flour it goes. Make sure you get it all over. And then dust any off. I want any excess flour. So into the batter, completely in, all over. And you're gonna pull it out of the batter, let it drain off a bit. Once it stops streaming, you're gonna put it into the oil. Now don't just let it go. Kind of wave it around a bit in there and then at a certain point, it'll pop up. If you just let this go right now before the batter's set, it's gonna to stick to the bottom of your fryer or wherever you're doing it in. You can see now it's almost popping up right there. So that's floating. Now you can lower in the other side gently and then release. And you won't have fish stuck to the bottom. Now if you can see here, there's a little bit that's probably a bit light on batter. So just cover a little bit by drizzling some on. Time for the baby piece and the flour. Some people put curry powder in their flour as well, or turmeric, just gives it a nice color, but sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And in the, in the oil, and let it rise. If you don't let it rise, she's gonna stick to the bottom, and that's no fun. Now the reason you batter fish before you fry it is fish is such a delicate meat, you wanna protect the meat as much as possible. So our fish is coming out. So that bigger piece was just over 10 minutes and the smaller piece, probably only about nine minutes. Hit it with some salt straight away and it's time to start cooking our chips. So fry's still on 180, let's get some chips in there. So these chips have only been in for like four or five minutes and they're already looking 
pretty much spot on. We know they're cooked through, so we're gonna pull them out. Make sure you turn your oil off. And just like the fish, we're gonna season them pretty quickly. It's time to plate up and eat some lunch. This one couldn't be easier to plate up. Pile up some chips. Piece of fish. Tartar sauce. Beautiful. So, fish and chips, definitely worth having a crack. Speaking of crack, what you want to hear. Let's have a taste. Mm. The crunchy batter, the perfectly cooked fish, like just super gently because it's not touching the heat directly. So good. Mm. Crunchy chips, nice and fluffy inside, and delicious tartar sauce to go with it all. Thanks for watching, legends. I hope you enjoyed this one. Chuck me a like if you did, and subscribe if you're not. We'll see you next Sunday for another recipe. Peace.